We've been using sine in triangles for quite a while now. We've been using it in right angle triangles like you were just doing for bearings and for angles of depression and so on. And just very recently we've been exploring, actually, it's useful even when the triangles aren't right angle. If I gave you something like this, uh, let's see. If I gave you something like this triangle with no right angles in sight, we can use the, I need another color. We can use, what's it called again? Sign. It's got sine in it. We can use the sine rule. We can say, oh look, I have an angle opposite a side and I'm interested in another angle opposite a side. So in this case, I could write. Well, what would we write actually? Just have a look at it. You don't need to write it down, just say it with me. What's the thing I'm looking for? The angle. So which one am I going to use? Which form am I going to use? The one with sine first. So I'd say sine theta divided by 15, that's opposite, equals sine 25 on 10. And then you go ahead from there. Okay. So cool, it's useful. However, sine is this weird kind of feature to it, uh, which is why the sine rule isn't the only thing. Later on this lesson, we're going to learn there's a cosine rule. I'll show you that shortly. So I want to show you why it has this weird puzzling thing. Sine 30, sine 45, etc. These are just sort of myths me for our calculators. We don't know what these are exactly. So I want you to reach for your calculator, and I just want you to help me get like, let's just get a couple of decimal places for each of these because some of them go on forever. Okay. Now, sine 30 degrees. Has anyone got it there? Interestingly, it is exactly a half. That's kind of weird, but we'll just leave it for now. Sine 45. Can I have another decimal point? Just another, maybe another two actually. I'd like a seven point, sorry. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Sine 60 degrees, give me three. Thank you. This one, last one, zero point. Great, okay. Now, I could have done this for any set of angles that I like, but these are kind of nice round angles. Here's where it gets a bit creepy, okay? Again, with your calculator, this time I would like you to input, not sine any of these angles, but sine 150 degrees. Sine 150. And what you'll notice is, for some reason, it's exactly 0 0.5, just like sine 30 was. Right? Okay, I'm going to give you another one. Can you do in your calculator sine of 135 instead? If you do sine 135, what you'll notice is it's 0 0.707, and all of those places, if you have an amazing memory, you'll notice are the same. Huh. Now, before I tell you the next one, I wonder if you could look and guess. What might I try next? I'm going to try sine 120 degrees. And suspiciously, you're going to find it's 0 0.866. Anyone brave enough to try the last one? Thank you, Eliana. Well done, Nick, for actually putting your hand on. Um, sine 105, you should find weirdly is exactly the same, 0 0.966 whatever, it's the same as 75 degrees. Okay, now by now, hopefully you can see a bit of a pattern. What's the, um, what's the relationship between the angles that I've got here, Ash? Yeah, each of these pairs that I've got here, if you've got one more color, uh, this one and this one, 30 plus 150, they'll give you 180, 45 plus 135, and so on, and so on. Did you have a question? Yeah, I was going to ask, is this one in classroom and classes on the graphs? Correct, correct. Okay. Now, I'm not quite going to go there, but yeah, no, that's what it is. Now, just think for a second. They all add up to 180, uh, these pairs of angles. Do you remember we have a name for when angles add up to 180 degrees? They're supplements. Very good. So, let's just put some arrows in. Okay, so this is kind of a peculiarity. The way I guess I would say this is that you could, by the way, you can try any other combination you like. 
Try a sine 29 degrees if you want. It's some weird number. I have no idea what it is. But I can assure you that sine 29 will be the same as sine 151 because they add up to 100 degrees. Now, unfortunately, this causes a bit of a problem for us. Let me show you why. Um, if I said sine x equals, like I did this, right? Oh, that's theta, sorry. Sine theta equals, and then after I did all of my working, you know, I rearranged the whole equation, I punched it into my calculator, and out popped out a half, okay? What am I gonna do next? Like on my calculator, what am I gonna push? I'm gonna press shift sign because I wanna kind of undo this, right? And your calculator will faithfully tell you, as according to the left-hand side we just did, the calculator will faithfully tell you, yeah, theta is 30 degrees. But here's the thing. What you're telling your calculator to do is, hey, there's some angle. I don't know what it is, but when I do sine of that angle, apparently the answer is a half. Can you tell me what the angle is? And it gives you a solution. However, it's not the only solution. There's another angle, in fact, there's an infinite number of angles, that if you do sine of that angle, you'll still get back that, right? So in fact, 30 degrees could be the answer. But 150 degrees could also be the answer. Okay. Now, what we call this is the ambiguous case. It's ambiguous as to which one it is. Okay. Now, we don't want to stress you out too much. The difference between each of these angles is this one is acute. Right? This one is not acute. It's obtuse. It's bigger than a right angle. Okay. Okay. Now, you actually can work out, therefore, when you go through this whole process, you need to do one of two things, right? Look at your diagram, if a diagram is provided. Okay. If they show you something like this, and we're actually going to do this one together. Okay. If I say, here's the angle I'm after, and this angle is clearly bigger than 90 degrees. Do you agree? Like, it's very obviously drawn. Okay. Um, draw this diagram with me. I'm going to fashion up some numbers. Uh, let's make this... Okay, so suppose this is the triangle that I give you. Just like in all the other examples that we've seen, I'm going to notice, oh look, uh, I've got, say it again, 15 degrees. I've got an angle and the side that's opposite. I want this angle and I have the side opposite that as well. Okay, so I do my normal thing on my diagram just like I did up here. I'm going to pair that and I'm going to pair that. So what line should I write to help me work this out? First thing. It's the sine rule. So I'm going to write sine theta. Um, what's it matched to? 30. Is that what Okay. is equal to, and then I'm going to do the other pair, sine 15 degrees over 20. Okay. Um, I then take that 30 over to the other side. Now, just for the sake of it, can we actually get the decimals here? This is going to, your calculator is going to calculate something for you. Can we get what the number is? It'll start with a zero point. Zero point, how many decimals? Give me four. Three, eight, eight, two. Thanks. Dot 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 dot. Okay, so that's what sine theta equals equal to. But of course, we don't want sine theta. We want theta. Okay, so you're going to go shift sine. Now, watch what kind of angle it provides to you. What's the size of the angle? Let's just get nearest degree. Anyone? Twenty-three. 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 Okay. That's what the calculator tells you. But clearly, that can't be 23 degrees, right? That doesn't look right. Look, at it, it, it doesn't match up properly, okay? It doesn't fit the diagram. Occasionally, if they don't give you a diagram, they'll actually say to you, don't just find theta, find the obtuse value of theta, rather than just what the calculator hands you, which is clearly not obtuse, okay? So you can say, but theta is obtuse. Either this question will flat out tell you in words, or the diagram will be very, very clear. Therefore, uh, remember 3150, uh, 4535, etc. They add together to make 
180. So I need the angle that's on the other side. What do I add to this? 157, right? That's the real angle. And that looks a little more healthy, doesn't it? Like it's really, really wide. Of course it is. 157 fits the bill. So again, a bit of a reminder, right? And maybe you want to put this right next to your diagram. In assessments, in exams, either read, look for the word obtuse. If they want you to find that angle, they'll tell you. Or look at the diagram. Inspect it closely and see whether the angle that they are after is clearly not less than 90 degrees. That's a huge angle, so they must want the big one. Okay. Now, um, I didn't decide it before because I hadn't explained it, but question six. Uh, actually, maybe I did assign it. I can't remember. Question six in this most, in the last exercise, which I want you to finish now, so they can move on to the next thing, um, is all about these obtuse angles. It's all about the obtuse angles. I'm pretty sure every question in question six, every part, yeah, it just says find the obtuse angle theta. So you're gonna get to here. Your calculator will tell you that, but then you have to say, no, wait, but. Theta is meant to be something else. So find the supplement, and you're done. <laughs> Okay?